Howdy y'all, it's Zach Dog. I'm here with something a little bit different than what I've done, although I have done a tutorial on EU4 in the past, but this one is not for anything that you're doing in the game. Now, I've recently been creating a few mods, as you can tell. Maybe you've actually seen my expanded colonial regions, which I am updating and working. I know I've gotten a few suggestions. If you're there from that, don't worry. Africa is coming and being expanded on. But... I recently got into both, you know, Hearts of Iron modding and EU4 modding, but I still get occasional people asking, you know, how do I create mods, or what if I want to make a mod just for myself? And I'm going to teach you how to make a mod just for yourself, or one-off playthroughs, or for something real simple that you don't have to worry about. You don't even have to. I know you can think, oh, go on here and create a new mod. You don't need to do that. We don't have to have the game open whatsoever. We can close it out go away because everything you need is in the game files and it's really easy to do so what we're going to do is go over to your game files now it's probably under your program files steam steam apps common eu4 unless you installed it somewhere else but if you installed it somewhere else you probably know where that is now there's a lot of files in here and it can be a little bit confusing on finding what you want but for most of what you're going to want to do and i'll get into some of the other stuff later will be under common and you're going to go all the way down to defines.lua. You can open this in anything. I'm going to use Notepad. I would recommend Notepad++ uh, just for general modding purposes. Go ahead and make this full screen. And there's a lot of stuff in here. And all of it is could be important depending on what you want. Including, you know, start date and date. But you don't really want to mess with those unless you really know or really have a plan for them. But... They're there. One of the things that I almost always do is up the max custom countries to 100. Sometimes the max colonial nations don't really run that run into that problem. I mean, it's right up at the top, really easy to see. Usually, now I would recommend if you're really interested in it, going and just scrolling through because basically everything in here is stuff you can change. Some of it's tied to uh, DLC, but all these different AI behaviors, are they going to vote for you based on your heretic, or a friend, or uh, the cost for peace, for demanding provinces, if you want to change that, you know, stuff like this. You can change that. A lot of it actually has helpful comments. What you're going to normally want to do is actually control F to specifically what you're looking for. For example, I recently did a game with... Uh, Basically, no, it was really fun to do. Obviously, a custom little mod that I made for myself got rid of when I was done. That basically removed the Diplo relations limit, removed the penalty, removed any sort of disloyalty from subjects. And all I needed to do, well, well there's a few things, and I'll go into the second step for the Diplo relations because that's not in here. But I wanted to work on subject loyalty. So there's several things you can do. It's a good idea to just guess if. If it's something that you think you know, it's probably in there exactly as you're thinking. You can think as uh, loyalty. All right. And there we go. Well, estate loyalty, of course. You might have to go all the way past it depending on what you want. As you can see, loyalty, not what we're looking for. Obviously, you can always just go up here, look through depending on what you want. It's actually not that difficult. Obviously, change the number of free cities, uh, removing electorate, anything like that. You could change the number of electors in the Holy Roman Empire. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Before I change anything, however, I'm going to teach you guys something also very, very important. Before you do anything, any file you plan on dealing with, you want to copy it, go to somewhere where you know it's going to be probably not in the game files. I would recommend the desktop. Create a new folder with the backup and paste the unaltered defines.lua in there. Now, I will show you how to get rid of your mod without having to worry about the backup later. However, it's good to have this just in case something goes horribly wrong because, especially with this amateur modding, that can happen pretty easily. Once again, I would recommend you go through all this depending on what you want, but it's pretty easy to find what you're looking for. If you can do a good guess, you can usually find it. You can reduce the cost of taking provinces, uh, diplomatic relations, diplomatic actions. Some of these are really long, really complicated. You don't really need to worry about too much of it. There's religion stuff. And Defines.lua is 
a lot of the core concepts of the game. However, that's not everything. We go back into common, there's a few other places that it's probably quite common for you to want to edit. And it's pretty easy to see. Now, for example, go into countries here. Now, if you think this is the focuses, I've got bad news for you, but it could still be useful if you want to do something a little weird. For example, we can go into France, which I just saw, and you can see here is a lot of the idea, historical idea groups. So if you want to change what the AI is going to take, for example, one of the things that I've done in the past is make it so every AI nation takes the exploration first, you can just switch that around exactly in order. Hits historical score that it starts with. Revolutionary colors, now that's pretty big because the revolutionary flags are going to be the tricolor and that's how they're set. And country color, if you want to change the color, these are all RGB values, of the country, you don't want France to be blue, you can change that up. Now I also want to make something clear, even stuff like this will probably disable achievements. So if you think you can come in here and just make everybody have no anything, make all the make it real easy, the game detects that the files are modified and it'll run just fine. You can go do a regular game, you can I think even do an Iron Man game if you really want that, but you can't really do achievements. And once again, we have army name, ship name, a lot of really cool stuff that you can do in here, because this is basically the cosmetic. We even have the leader names. So this is also, if you're ever interested in real modding and creating a new country, looking into one of these as a template would be a nice idea. But that's obviously, we wanted the ideas, right? Well, that's not going to be in there. We go to idea groups and basic ideas. These are kind of like the idea groups. Once again, we see innovative, religious, spy, diplomatic. It's pretty easy to tell which one it is. But if you want to change something like this, you want it to make uh, the engineer course siege ability all the way up to 999, you could do that. Don't want to do that because that make. Oh, also, these are global, by the way. Anything you change in here for these offensive ideas will apply to everyone. So if you make that one give you Siege 999, and an AI takes that, and you go to war with them, they will just wipe out every province you have, no problem. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to add that, because these are going to be permanent. Don't save. We want to go back to country ideas. Here's what you're probably looking for. And it's sorted alpha, or not alphabetical, but by the tag. If you don't know what a country's tag is, you can just Google it. I think it's on the wiki. You can also go into the game, type in debug in the console commands, and you can hover over a nation to see what its tag is. But, for example, if we wanted to find Austria's tag, you might think you type in AUS. No. Well, one, you do have to worry. You will sometimes have some of these, but AUS is not Austria's tag. I believe it's HPB or HAB. Something like that. I probably need to go to the top before... Just in case. That's another thing. If you're on the middle of it and you do a search, you sometimes won't find it. H. A. B. Yeah, it's H. A. B. For Austria. And we see the Habsburg ideas for Austria. This will apply to AI Austria as well as you. So keep that in mind if you forget to get rid of your changes and you accidentally make an overpowered Austria. But, for example, one of the things that I did... Oh, also, if you want to reorder... You can literally just cut and paste, but be very careful about the formatting in here. You mess it up, your game is screwed over. Once again, create a backup of any file that you're going to modify. And if you want to go over here, what I did for my uh, playthrough with Infinite Diplomat Reputation, just type in a bunch of zeros. And then, bam, the Habsburgs are going to have an insanely high number of everything. Very fun uh, if you ever want to mess with that. However... Once again, it's up to you. Now, I know what you're seeing over here. You don't really want to mess with these unless you want to mess with, for example, you know how you saw the country ideas here. This is for the client states and the colonials. Uh, a few other things in here, but mostly you're going to be dealing with these. Matter of fact, I'm not entirely certain what all these do. Some of them are just cultures. For example, I believe the uh, Italian ideas or something is in there basically the yeah like German ideas for generic German nation, generic Irish. 
There's a lot of them in here that some of them are a little interesting that are actually in there. Because I don't know if there's any Irish nations that don't have a custom focus tree. But they're in there anyway. Maybe a little hint at what they're doing in the future. Actually, I think we just learned today that they're adding a bunch of new Irish miners. Whatever. And that is the whole basis of what you're going to be doing for modifying. You'll find what you want. There's all kinds of stuff in common. Outside of common, there won't be that much. For example, colonial regions. This is where I did 99% of the modifications for my mod. Not quite as easy as it seems because you have to list every single province that you want added in. More tedious than difficult, but you know. Uh, country colors, country tags, most of these things are pretty self-explanatory. You want to go into the peace treaties, you can see what they do. Obviously, some of these are even warning you. Are included, all entries are default to zero. Try negative values at your own risk. They can't guarantee you that every change you make is going to work. Once again, create a backup of anything you do. But now the most important part, getting rid of the changes. These are temporary mods. You're not going to be adding them into a mod. That's the whole point of this basic simple mod. There are plenty of tutorials on how to make big mod. You set it up in the mod menu. You uh, upload it to the workshop and everything. You don't really need to do that for this. You're using it for your own purpose. And once you're done with that playthrough or your purpose, you can go ahead and get rid of it. Now, if you have the backup, like I recommended, you can paste that in. However, maybe you forgot, you got rid of the backup, or you just don't want to use it. What you can do, you go to Properties over here, Local Files, Verify the Integrity. It will take a few minutes, so I'm not going to do it right now, but it will go through, check every file, find the ones that you modified, and replace them with the vanilla versions, and your mod is gone with no permanent impact on your game. You're good to go and create another mod or just play a vanilla playthrough with achievements. Hope this helped you. Uh, I just feel like, felt like I wanted to put this out there. There are a lot of mods on the workshop that probably don't really need to be there because they're so basic to do. And for things, this is very helpful for minor nuisances. For example, the thing I use the most is getting rid of that custom nation cap. Especially if I'm doing a custom world setup and I have the whole world blank and I want to set it up. It's kind of annoying when I hit 75 nations and I'm almost done and oops, can't do any more. So it's great to go ahead and modify that for whatever you want. Uh, one warning when it comes to, I believe I still have Defines.Lua open. I do. When it comes to values up here for colonial nations, uh, client states and everything, it says max is 100. Keep it, it, it is not joking. It really cannot go over 100 because their tag is D00 to D99 or C00 to C99. You can't get these over 100. Any questions you have are probably answered by uh, these comments that they leave you. I hope this tutorial could help you all. Uh, I hope that it makes you better at modding the game potentially makes you interested in developing your own mods like that's basically what it did for me that's why i'm developing these fuller scale more reusable mods and even if it didn't even if it didn't teach you anything i hope it was worth your time uh if you liked it uh be sure to like so that other people can see it and that we can have a more thriving modding community thank you